Okay, and then we uh, tear that line out. Okay, there we are. Okay, and I'm going to screen share our PowerPoint. Just from the beginning, I guess, on the slideshow. Yeah, what do y'all see? Do you see my first page? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us this morning. Um, this is the spring workshop that we hold annually for the Arts Build Communities Grant, which is a grant that the Tennessee Arts Commission um, administers. My name is Stephanie Hare, and I am the Historic Preservation Planner with the Southeast Tennessee Development District. Um, and I'll let Melissa introduce herself. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. I am Melissa Aston. I'm with Arts Build, and my position is the manager of grants and community engagement. So, um, so this morning, let's see. Sorry. So this, yeah, so this <laughs> morning our agenda is pretty straightforward. We're going to do um, introductions of our organizations, and we're going to go through the grant overview of the program and answer any questions throughout. You're welcome to also, um, we'll open it up for questions at the end. If there happens to be any questions we can answer at this time, I'm gonna do a follow-up email with everyone who is registered. And that way I can get your questions over to the Tennessee Arts Commission and get those answers for you. Thank you. Fantastic. So um, pr as previously stated, I work with the Southeast Tennessee Development District. There are nine development districts in the state of Tennessee. And what we do is, you know, we're kind of the middleman between um, local governments and or, uh, nonprofit organizations and um, the state and federal programs that we partner with. Um, we were administered or established by the General Assembly in 1965, and we're here to help out with anything from housing and elderly care and historic preservation to grant administration, including the ABC grant. So that is a little about what we do. Awesome, thank you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm with Arts Build, and when I'm looking at the participant list, there are many friends of Arts Build on this call, which is great. Um, Arts Build since 1969 has invested more than $76 million in arts in Chattanooga and Hamilton County through grant making, art education initiatives, leaderships in arts, advocacy, we carry out our mission each day to build a stronger community through the arts. So um, what we're all here for today is the Arts Builds Community Grant Program. Um, it is designed to provide support for arts projects that deepen access to arts experiences, address community qual quality of life through the arts, and enhance sustainability. Um, of asset-based cultural enterprises, basically meaning if your organization has some sort of project that is focused on the arts and community engagement, it could be eligible for potential funding through the Tennessee Arts Commission and this grant program. Um, so get creative with your project uh, proposals. Uh, we can find probably some money for almost every kind of project. So the uh, objectives of um, the ABC grant program are to provide new and innovative art experiences, such as arts festivals, theater performances, concerts, visual arts, craft shows. It is also to affect positive community um, change in um, social issues. And so you can have a project that is focused on um, populations of underserved community members, cancer patients, veterans, 
um, things of that nature. If you have an art project connected to conservation and health literacy and things of that nature, it falls within the ABC parameters. It is also to strengthen social networks through community engagement. So examples of that are services that are not normally a part of the organization's work, such as lectures and demos and tours and festivals and conferences and symposia. And it is also to enhance the community's identity and development. And examples of that include community revitalization efforts through arts, creative, placemaking, development of natural resources using the arts and public art. And then it is also uh, to offer training for artists and art administrators, um, you know, through a master class or a maker space or an arts in incubator. So this is really good to kind of hone your craft to take you to the next level. Oh, fantastic. Um, <clears throat> for the ABC program, you can request a maximum award of $3,500. Um, we'll get into a little bit more of that momentarily, but these applications are open as of now. Um, so, you know, even as early as today, you can get started on a draft. These are due by July 1st. And so I'm going to actually share my screen, Melissa. Let's see here. Okay. Yes, number two. Uh, that work. Can you guys see the Tennessee Arts Commission screen? Yes. Or is it Word documents? Okay. I can see the TAC screen. Fantastic. Sorry, I wanted to make sure. So if you go to the Tennessee Arts Commission webpage and you just go to the grant opportunities, first and foremost, there are a plethora of um, programs that the Arts Commission offers. The one that we're talking about today is, of course, the Arts Build Communities grant uh, program. And so when you come to the main page, this is what you're going to see. It's got loads of information. Please take the time to familiarize yourself with all of these. Um, and of specific note is this ABC tutorials box down here. So if you click on this, you'll be brought to three tutorials. And they're just PDF documents. Uh, part two is the how to apply. This is going to be very helpful for having links to different um, things like registering into the system, etc. So as I said, the, you can already access them through the online grants system. And what that looks like is this. I've got my stuff pre-populated, but what you'll want to do is go to the register link here and you individuals are not uh, eligible for ABC grants. So you'd pick organization and then literally just fill in the blanks very easy just to get them uh, working on um, getting you a username and password and keep record of this username and password because that's what you'll be using um, if you are funded to access the grant portal. So, you know, make sure you give that one to seven days you know they're they're usually pretty quick about getting you a username but just don't wait until the day before the deadline to request for a username because it you know it's a little bit more involved than you know five minutes and speaking of the deadline this um deadline is july 1st of this year so definitely within the next few weeks even just go ahead and get your your username taken care of if you've not already received commission funding in the past. So like I showed you, you'll go through this, you'll use the register link, and all of these tutorials give you loads of information on how to complete the organization profiles, um, et, et cetera. Of specific note this year, and this is true whether or not you've received commission grant funds in the past or not, the um, federal government is moving away from a system that we previously called the DUNS numbering system. And if you're a nonprofit or government, you know what a DUNS number is. They're moving to the UEI or a unique entity ID. Um, you're gonna register your organization through sam.gov. And if you've already got a DUNS number, this is a fairly quick process. If you do not have a DUNS number already, then you still go to sam.gov and it will start that whole process for you. And basically, this is just to allow for better tracking at the federal level um, for any kind of grant program that 
that we use. So, you know, the UEI number is not specific to Tennessee Arts Commission grants. It's going to be for all state and, and federal grants. So uh, definitely, definitely get that going. And yeah, so these tutorials are just going to show exactly how to go through your application. There's a video demonstration. Um, you know, I don't know if we want to show the video or not, but all of these links are very, very helpful. Um, and just follow this to a T, basically. Let's see here. Let me pull up this. All right. So do you want to move to eligibility, Melissa? Sorry. Yes, that sounds great. I'll reshare my screen. A couple of notes of what Stephanie was talking about as you're registering and figuring out your project and um, you know, you want some feedback or some guidance or mentoring, feel free to reach out if you're in Hamilton County, reach out to me at Arts Build. If you're in um, one of the nine counties that Stephanie represents, reach out to her and we'd be more than happy to support you through the process of brainstorming, creating the project and, you know, because we've been doing this and we know some great feedback for you all. Um, so in terms of eligibility, you need to um, be a nonprofit, a 501c3, or a local entity of government. So government departments, libraries, public schools. So let's say you're an individual human without any of that, right? Still, let's, let's brainstorm of how you can participate in the ABC program. So that means maybe partnering with a local nonprofit or partnering with the library. So I can support and connect you with the right humans in the world to make it happen. Because if you have a good idea, we want to make sure that maybe you can um, move forward despite not having those criteria. All right, so as previously mentioned, you can, um, apply for a maximum award of $3,500. The awards um, are determined by a scoring rubric that we will go over momentarily. Um, basically, if you are advanced to the next stage in the application process, we have a panel of qualified arts professionals who rank each application based off of a scoring rubric that we will um, show in this presentation, but also share the link uh, separately as well. And, you know, not everybody's going to get that maximum $3,500 award, but the awards will range um, from around $500 to that $3,500. The main point on this is applicants must demonstrate a dollar to for dollar cash match. So that's something a little specific to ABC. You cannot use um, like volunteer time as a cat as part of the cash match. It has to be a dollar for dollar uh, match. However, if you do have people who are wanting to um, volunteer their time or supplies or what have you, the Arts Commission does want to know about that because we do keep up with all of that information just to kind of gauge um, kind of involvement over the state within arts organizations so that we know what is still needed out there. Um, so yeah, just definitely make sure you're, you're demonstrating that dollar for dollar match. I can't tell you the applications that we've you know, had to deny because they just don't, they can't show that. Absolutely. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, I, something I do want to mention is um, you don't actually have to be an arts organization right. to apply. You can, as long as your project is focused on arts and culture, um, that is you are still eligible. So keep that in mind because we have a lot of participants on this list that aren't actually arts organizations, but you would have a program that would be art and culture focused that would be phenomenal for the community. So just keep that one in mind. Okay. So the funding needs to be used between August 16th and June. Um, August 16th, 2022, and June 15th, 2023. There are some ways in which you cannot use the funding. 
So if you're already being funded for the project through the Tennessee Arts Commission, um, you can't double dip. Um, you can't use it for capital improvements such as construction and equipment purchases and things of that nature. Um, you can't use it to eliminate accumulated deficits in your budget and things of that nature. Um, it is not, you're not eligible for in-school curriculum based projects for endowments or out of state travel expenses. So there are a plethora of appropriate activities that ABC grant funds can be applied to. Um, the majority of these are going to go towards um, artist fees for those master classes or for you know, any kind of traveling workshops or anything like that. Um, you can also use it to cover supplies and then the shipping and rental fees that could be associated with any supplies that you may need for you know, putting on a festival or um, a summer movie night series or something like that. You can get very creative, um, but you, know, you can, and you can also apply it to salaries for key people working on the project. So that can be very, very helpful. Um, so yeah, you can pay for murals, exhibitions of art. Um, you can uh, pay for any publicity that you're trying to get out there for your event, um, et cetera. Some inappropriate activities, um, like Melissa said, endowments are not uh, eligible, insurance premiums, um, rental, like rent for your space, um, cannot, you can't apply it for that. Um, scholarships, out of state travel, this is all purely Tennessee based, um, legal fees, and then purchases of local public art. So you cannot, you know, pub, uh, you can't uh, purchase a sculpture or something that's in the public realm. What if the festival is August 13th, 2022? Let's see. So that would have been covered. What was the dates again? It's Mom? August 16th. So that would be. That would have been last this previous fiscal year. So if you can um, move that festival day even one weekend in it, you know, in the future, then you could apply it to this year's funding request. So yeah, there's a whole. The, the, they do. Oh, on the I website. see what she's saying. Um, that would fall. Yeah, you'd have to push it a few days. Yeah, you'd have to push it a few days. They're very particular about those um, the project dates. So anything after August 16th of this year, and then June 15th of next year is the is the time frame. Right. And then we did go over the matching requirement. You know, you just really have to make sure that you're showing that cash match, um, you know, but do identify whether or not you've had some sort of in-kind donation offered to you. Um, and you will have to identify the source as a part of the, the paperwork that goes along with this grant, which Melissa and I will, you know, be happy to help you walk through. Um, you know, I'm in everybody's email inboxes once we start these grant programs. <laughs> Um, there's some required supported materials um, for this grant, and we can walk you through it as you're doing it. Most of you all, if you're part of organizations, have written grants and have this already in your um, saved files. If not, we can help you through it. So list the board of directors and things of that nature, your corporation, your annual report, things of, you know, your bylaws and you know all the things that your organization has they just wanted uploaded for the grant um, and things of that nature so that's pretty straightforward um, when you're applying it just line items it and you upload it into the program in the system and then I just saw a question come in, Melissa, can you use these funds to help rent a venue for your project or for your uh, event? That is okay. You just can't use it to uh, pay, you know, rental fees for your, your place of business or your, your nonprofits um, brick and mortar, for example, you can't use it for that. Um, and then as previously mentioned, that DUNS to UEI transition, we've had a couple of people jump in since I did go over that. 
Um, if you are a part of a nonprofit organization or a local entity of government, you probably have already heard about this, but the federal government is transitioning to a new system. We're moving away from DUNS numbers and we're going towards unique entity identifier. SAM.gov is the link that you need. It walks you through it very easily. Uh, so get on that ASAP. <laughs> All right, so the evaluation criteria. Once you have a project in mind and you've either worked with Melissa or myself and to kind of you know flesh it out a bit, and once you've drafted your application and hit submit, the next step, as I referenced briefly earlier, is that a qualified panel of professionals are going to rank your application based on this 100 point scale. And again, there's a rubric that really breaks this down even further, but it just shows you the points category. So you're gonna to want to demonstrate that your project has artistic or cultural merit. Um, you know, that's a good 35 points right there. And then the next key part is how are you engaging the community with this project? How much participation is this project offering to the community? This is not necessarily just about um, you know, like murals can be funded, but you really have to drive home like how that's going to benefit the community. So those are the two largest chunks of evaluation criteria. And the next slide will show the rest. So yeah, your budget and financial support, that cash to cash, that dollar to dollar cash match um, is essential for the ABC grant program. You're gonna demonstrate that cash match in your budget in the financial support section and then just operational practice and that's covered a lot with those um, required documents that Melissa went over and just showing that you're a nonprofit showing your charter and your mission, etc. Oh Melissa you're on mute. Perfect, thank you. Um, Stephanie talked about the panel review. Um, we will, through ArtsBuild and through Stephanie's organization, there will be five people on a panel review. So what we do is we push the applications over to these panel reviewers and support them in scoring and getting feedback back to the applicant so that we can move your application through the system and hopefully get it funded. So we're very biased, unbiased in this situation that we're not making the decision. We're supporting community members through the process of making the funding decision. And if you perchance happen to know anybody in the community who would like to be on our panel reviews, I'll include that in my email because we're always looking for community members to be a part of that. Yes, please. It's about an, uh, you know, it, the phone call, the, the panel review itself has been uh, virtual. So use, usually phone call the last couple of years, it'd take a few hours of your time. And uh, yeah, I always thank you, Melissa, for that. I always try to plug for more people for the panel review. Uh, so thank you for that. All right. Uh, so the ABC tutorial, Stephanie walked you through where to find that. It'll be also in the link of the email that I sent you all. The nice thing about them is I, um, as many of you know, I am newish to Arts Build and newish to the ABC grant. So I'm walking alongside, uh, alongside you all. And I went through the, all the tutorials. They're very, very helpful. They're very clear cut and um, direct. And so I encourage you to go through the three. It'll take you maybe 30 minutes, if that. It's very um, quick. Very quick. And they provide screenshots of all of the, the screens that you'll be seeing. Mm -hmm. um, they're very, very thorough for that, so. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, there is another question. Can you please give examples of the types of festivals that would be eligible? Would they totally, must they totally be focused on the arts? Not necessarily. I can only speak to the applications and the projects that I help administer. But for example, there is a festival in Cleveland that was um, awarded an ABC grant last year, and that's for science fiction festival. So if you can, you know, 
so much is a part of art and culture. So you can very, you can get very, very creative. You know, if photography would count science fiction, popular culture, all of these things are a part of that broad arts and culture uh, category and music, uh, music concerts would definitely be covered, especially if you're, excuse me, especially if you're focused on local artists, we definitely do, um, we're, you know, the panelists are always a little biased towards local artists getting recognition. Those are great questions. Yeah, so I guess we're at that slide for questions. So please, if you do have a question, feel free to unmute or put it in the chat box. Um, I guess while we're waiting on a couple of questions, Melissa, I'm gonna share my screen to just show the scoring rubric really quick. Hang on, there's one. Can operational funds be used for the match requirement or does it have to be from an outside source? So you're having to show, um, when you see the budget breakdown, it, it may break it down a little easier, but you're looking at, is this event going to be income producing? You could count like ticket sales for that. Um, but general operate, like as if you have funds marked uh, for the event, that would count. You can't say, oh, I paid my light bill. Can I use that necessarily? It has to be specific to this project. Okay, let me quickly share. And then just while we're waiting on any additional questions, here's that scoring rubric for your applications. Um, it really breaks it down like, you know, back when you were in school and doing writing prompts and you would read what, what you need to do to, to get an excellent score. So they really do just lay it all out. So in the budget section, and this kind of covers the last question that came in, you're looking at, you know, detailed and accurate costs and income information. It doesn't have to be an income producing event, but they want to know if it is. Um, and that ABC is one of many funding sources being per pursued. They don't want to see you apply for ABC funds and basically say, this event can't happen without the ABC funding. You can stress the importance of getting ABC funding, but they don't want you to have to rely on that necessarily. Let's see, if it is not income producing and one was granted 2000, the other 2000 would need to come from private, yes, yes, from private corporate foundation giving. Um, if you have earmarked money in your operational budget for a specific event, like a concert or festival, that specific category, like whatever funds you've set aside for the event would count. Stop sharing. Is it C3 only or would a C4 be eligible? And Oh, sorry, that was a direct message to me. Somebody did ask a good question. It, does it have to be a 501c3 or can it be a 501, uh, I guess 501c4? It needs to be a C3 nonprofit organization or a local entity of government. But like Melissa said earlier, feel free to partner with agencies, um, governmental agencies or nonprofits. There are many more than you might think in the area. I'm just going over any more questions here. And one of the things I thought about as we're generating questions is, let's say you're not eligible for the ABC grant and you're in Hamilton County. Um, Artsfield has numerous grant opportunities and I will include that in my email. Um, our Community Cultural Connections grant, our racial equity grants for individual artists, mission support. Um, so we have a lot of options at Artsfield if per, if per chance you don't fit within ABC. So for example, the CCC, Community Cultural Connections, you don't have to be a 501c3 or a government entity. So there are other options as well. And so I'll include that in our email. Thank you very much for that point, Melissa. And the development district similarly provides support or at least puts you in touch with organizations who can provide support. So, you know, if you're in one of my nine counties, feel free to email me with any ideas. Um, I'll either walk you through the process of becoming a 501c3 or I will put you in touch with one that can act as kind of an umbrella for these types of programs. Um, does anybody have a project in their mind that they think might work, but they're not quite sure. 
I don't know if you feel comfortable sharing a project, you know, a draft project, but Hunter Memorial Foundation is always open for partnership. Thank you so much from the Hunter Foundation. Um, Chattanooga Historical has a uh, question. If we were to do um, a recreation of the spring festivals that were once held in Chattanooga, um, involving like art vendors and local businesses, live music, would that? That would absolutely yeah. be eligible, yes. Okay. And is there any restrictions? Um, so I'm pretty new to the area um, and you know a lot of the ABC laws in Tennessee are strange. Are there any restrictions on like alcohol sales with the grant, is that allowed or not? Let me, that's a great question, yeah. first off. There is a whole, hang on just one second. Familiarize yourself with the website because somewhere on here, and if I can find it quickly, I'll, I'll put the link in the email that we're gonna send, up, send out to everybody. There is basically a whole bylaws type of document which goes into the legalities. Of, uh, of what ABC grants can be used for. I can't think of a project that I've administered that involved alcohol, but that's not to say that it's not allowed. It's just, that's a great question and we can answer it momentarily, unless Melissa knows, sorry. Yeah, I, I don't know the answer well enough to give it on this session. What I will do is include it in the email. I'll touch base with the Tennessee Arts Commission and get feedback um, and, you know, I know we all know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. If if it is allowed, you'd also have to um, follow local guidelines and permits and licensures and things for Hamilton County. And we can support you in that, um, get you to the right people if you don't know the right people at the moment. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see. Outdoor concerts with live music eligible. Absolutely. Music is definitely an art type of cat it's in the arts category so that would most certainly be eligible and as a freelance photographer who works for myself would I need to partner with a 501c3 yes you would unfortunately for this particular program but like Melissa said there are other options available for uh individuals it just depending on what kind of project you had in mind yeah and um Hamilton County has about a million and a half nonprofits. We can find you one to partner with. So um, keep the conversation going if you don't have that designation currently. Absolutely. And then just in line kind of with that, yeah. you, know, you would think that because my area, my designated agency area is nine counties, that I would have so many nonprofits to, to contact. I actually don't because so many are based out of Chattanooga. So if you are in one of my nine counties and you happen to know of another arts organization that you feel might benefit from this program, please send them my way because we, we deal with more of the rural area around Chattanooga and it can be tricky at times to find enough uh, eligible participants. And let's see, I got a private message. Um, Hunter Foundation, do you mind to maybe pop in the chat box just your contact information? Um, cause somebody may be interested in partnering with you. Thank you so, so much for that offer. Let's see here. All right. Thank you so much. Does anybody else have any other questions or, you know, thinking of us, you know, again, if you want to brainstorm a project right now, when, when we have a huge group of like-minded people or. Also feel free to uh, email or call Melissa or I. If I could jump in with a brainstorming question. This is Jim Stewart. I'm in Saudi Daisy. Um, we have several projects going on. One I'm sure would be covered. We're uh, starting to paint murals on the side of buildings in the city. Uh, we've gotten enough funding, we think, for the first mural, but we're looking to do some additional ones over the next year. So I think that would definitely qualify. Uh, one that I'm not sure about, we're going to hold a community-wide fall festival in October. It's going to include vendors, uh, you know, even some uh, chainsaw carvers. It's going to have music, but it's not strictly 
an arts festival. So I'm not sure if something like that might be covered, but only part of what we're doing is related to the arts. Jim, um, what is the, the theme of the festival? Do you have a theme or a purpose? Like, what do you... It, it, it's basically to bring the community together. Uh, we held one last year and had over 1,200 people there. It was the first time we tried it. Uh, this year, we're expecting to have an even larger turnout. So it's more to bring the community together um, with a lot of different activities. There'll be kids' activities, and I mentioned a few arts-related activities. We're probably going to have a 5K race this year for the first time. So um, I don't know if something like that would fall in this area or if we should look for funding from other grants. Based on what you're saying, it I feel like it would qualify in terms of expanding arts and culture. Um, it impacts community very directly. I will um, address that in my email too about like projects that are just not quite centered art, but incorporate it in lots of aspects. I feel like you're um, good to move forward with it, but I will get confirmation on that for you. Okay, thank you. And I'll just jump in really quick. I'm not over Hamilton County or Saudi Daisy, but if, if you were to want to proceed with an application for that particular festival, just in the application, really hone in that the ABC grant funds would be applied towards the more artistic side of the festival. Um, you know, if you're going to be paying any of the chainsaw artists, for example, that would be a great use of ABC funds. Um, you know, you, it doesn't have to pay for the entire festival. You're just going to be showing what you want the ABC grant funds oh, okay. to be to. So that, course, that's a way to kind of get some more of these ideas incorporated. I will also say though, that this is a very competitive process, especially in Hamilton County. So make sure you're honing in on the arts um, section in your application. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Anyone else have a brainstorm that you kind of want to get out there or, you know, partner with people? I, you know, this is an open discussion at this point, but I don't, we don't want to take up too much of your day either. Well, yeah, it looks like we've reached a point where uh, folks have gotten enough information <laughs> for the time being. Um, so what, um, I'm very appreciative of you all jumping on this Zoom. There's 28 folks on. Um, that's great, a great traction. I will do a follow-up to everybody and CC Stephanie on it. Um, and we'll do a collective email to um, connect you with the tutorials and our contact information and answering some of the questions and clarifications. And if you're in Hamilton County, if at any point you want to pop over to Artsfield, with a beautiful building. We'll show you around. We'll show you all our projects that are happening and how we can support you moving forward. Absolutely, absolutely. And then just for further clarification, if you are an organization that is located outside of Hamilton County, so one of the other nine counties that we put on the advertising I will be holding a very, very similar workshop to this on May 18th at 1 Eastern, 1 p.m. Eastern. If you just between now and then have a question that you would like to ask or, you know, et cetera, there will be another follow-up workshop to this. So thank you everybody for your time. Yeah, there was one last question in the chat. Herman asked how to connect um, with his particular um, genre of art in an organization. I will email you directly, Herman. I think I've already started an email chain and we'll go from that. And anybody else can reach out to me and I can help you in that respect. So thank you everybody for your time. We cannot wait to see your projects start to come in. Uh, just be aware of that July 1st deadline and be aware that you need to go through sam.gov and the registration for the Tennessee Arts Commission flux system between now and then. So thanks everybody. Awesome. Thank you. You have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going to stop the recording, I guess. Yeah.